So uh, here's the deal. I, I don't see I how it, it yeah. can't come out, right? I don't see how it can't come out. It's clearly relevant. I mean, this is a civil lawsuit based on a theory of intentional infliction of emotional distress that the family of Ryan Laundry knew that their son killed Gabby and withheld information from Gabby's parents to the point of even ghosting them on Facebook, to the point of putting out a press release saying, we hope the search for Miss Petito is successful. And this is very relevant to that because this would show that, yeah, she knew that Brian had killed Gabby and that she was sort of coaching him perhaps on disposing the body. So yeah, it's definitely relevant. And if the Laundry family wants to say, well, this had nothing to do with the actual murder. This was written months or weeks before. Well, then let a judge and a jury sort it out. But to suppress that letter as irrelevant, I don't see how they can do that. Yeah, and it's our understanding, Dave, that um, there's no date on the letter. Um, so how exactly could they really prove when, when it was written? I mean, couldn't the laundries just say, no, this has nothing to do with anything. I mean, how would they prove it in the end if there's no date? Well, that's what the a hearing would be for. A judge would have to question the parties, would review it, and you look at all the different things uh, to see, for example, uh, Gabby's name is in the letter. The fact that the letter was in Brian's possession when he died, I, that's sort of peculiar that he would hold on to a letter that was written months before that had nothing to do with this matter. I think that the evidence that we know, there's circumstantial evidence, would point to the fact that it is related to the murder. But if it's not, it's for a judge to decide. And if it's a questionable uh, matter, then it should go to a jury and let the jury figure it out. But just to suppress it, to not allow it in as irrelevant, I don't think, unless you have something that we don't know, I don't think that's possible. Yeah, and I was thinking the same thing that you just said. I mean, if it is an old letter, it's certainly interesting that he had it in the backpack uh, when he went out to the to the marsh uh, to commit suicide. Um, do you think that this single piece of evidence? I mean, it keeps coming up in court. Clearly, the Petito's attorney thinks it's very important. But do you think it's enough to show that um, that there was this pain and suffering, and that the uh, that that the Laundries actually knew that Gabby Petito was dead all along? I don't think this is enough. I think this is a piece of the puzzle. I think when you combine that with the ghosting on Facebook, I mean, who does that, right? Your uh, your um, son's fiance is missing. This is a girl who lived with the Brian Laundry parents in their home for a year. And when she's missing, you ghost her parents. And then you put out a press release that is so cold that doesn't refer to Gabby as Gabby. The press release said, we hope the search for Miss Petito is successful. That is cold-blooded. And when you combine all of that with this new bit of evidence, I think that makes for a compelling case for the plaintiffs. And at the very least, I think it is evidence that a jury should see. Yeah, I've struggled with that since the beginning. That That's one of the things that's never made sense to me in terms of, like you said, the laundries ignoring the petitos throughout that process. That's certainly going to be part um, of, of this, um, this civil trial. Uh, one thing that a lot of people ask me, because they get more and more mad when new evidence comes out like this letter, they get more and more upset with the laundries. And, and you're the perfect person to, to ask this since you're a, a prosecutor. Do you think criminal charges could still be possible, or are they are they off the table? And remember, um, according to the uh, Petito attorney, the FBI already had this letter, so they clearly know about it. Uh, but do you think we we may ever see criminal charges with the parents? I don't think so, Brian. I think the justice that Gabby's parents will get will have to come in civil court through this lawsuit. But as far as criminal charges, you would need more than a letter. You would have to show that Brian's parents tried to help him escape, did something to perhaps sanitize the van, tried to hide evidence, tried to destroy evidence. Then you can charge them with tampering with evidence, or you can charge them with accessory after the fact. But to charge them with accessory after the fact, they, number one, would have to know that Brian killed Gabby, and number two, they'd have to actively do something to help cover it up. Just writing a letter like this to me is not enough. 
Interesting. Yeah, we've got the lawsuit now, lawsuit now happening in Florida near where you are, and then there's this other lawsuit um, happening uh, in Moab, uh, Utah, against the police department there for the way that they handled uh, the stop involving uh, Brian and Gabby. So we'll watch, see how it all plays out. Uh, Dave Ehrenberg, Dave Ehrenberg, I know your name, my longtime uh, buddy. Th thanks for coming on tonight. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, Brian Enton. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.